Hey guys, welcome back to the Detailing Space. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the difference between polishing, compounding, and wet sanding. We're also gonna throw in a bit at the end for you guys who are not using machine and you're doing this just by hand as well. So make sure you stick around for that. But before we get into that, we need to talk about when you're gonna use each of these different processes, what the differences are between them and what kind of defects we're gonna be removing. So for that, we just need to take a seat and take a look at the whiteboard. So when we talk about polishing, often it's used as a catch-all term. Um, you'll hear a lot of noob is into the detailing scene talk about what polish should i use for my car and what they are thinking of is the polish that typically f fills in defects when really polishing is more the process of making an object shinier and glossy and the way you do that is by leveling the top layer of paint clear coat varnish whatever it is so yeah i've got a diagram behind me um listing some of the common defects i did do a video when we first started the channel about four or five years ago um, yeah, going more in depth into paint defects. I'll put a link to that just up there now if you want to check that out. So anyway, as I said, I've got this diagram at the back. Um, and yeah, we'll quickly talk about what it is that we're doing. So over here then we've got the clear coat. So this is a clear coat. We've got the color. So we've got blue, blue panel over there and the primer. So this is typically how your paint is made up. And of course, the body panel below so that's going to be metal fiberglass carbon fiber plastic whatever um so yeah over here then you've got your typical swirls marring the light scratches that you're just going to pick up day to day and um, whether you're using a microfiber that's a bit dry um oh yeah or just touching it with your hands so you get polishes that can fill these so you'll get a lot of glazers which we'll touch on later um yeah and essentially you mask these and these are the deeper sort of swirls, scratches, um, yeah, brushes with the hedges, stuff like that. And you can polish these away. And typically what you're gonna be doing is leveling the lacquer. So you're gonna polish the lacquer down to here, get rid of that. And the reason a scratch shows up, by the way, so these deeper scratch here, this is an example where it's gone all the way through to the primer and maybe even down to the body panel. And these are what you see, your fingernail will typically catch them if they catch. Usually can't do a great deal, but we can try and wet sand them out. And what happens is light comes in, just essentially bounces around it, just looks white. So that's where you get these white scratches on your car. But you can lessen the effect by rounding over these edges um, and it just takes your eye away from them. So sometimes you can try and get rid of a scratch. You'll never 100% get rid. Um, the average person may not see it. The owner, if they looked around, I've had a few cars recently where the owner can't see the scratch, but I know where it was. And if I look for it, I could just about see it. But because you've rounded it over, it sort of disappears. And then over on the end here, so what I've listed is I've done some paint readings. So you'll want a paint thickness gauge such as this. And you'll take readings of the panel. Um, so for the test panel behind the camera, I'm getting about 95 uh, microns, which I think is about three, four mil um, for the Americans. So you get about 95 microns, that's total thickness of primer color clear. You can buy more expensive gauges, which will read individual layers, um, but unless you're a pro detailer, you're not gonna be buying one of those. So one trick is measure the door jams, or in my case, the underside of the test panel. It's typically gonna be less clear there. Um, so I've got 65 uh, mil under the panel, 95 on top average so we're like 30 35 microns to play about with polishing normally should only be re removing one or two microns wet sanding might be a bit more aggressive and also to note wet sanding is when you would probably use um, you would use wet sanding on orange peel as i say and really really deep scratches so yeah it's all about as well one thing to consider is you don't want to sacrifice all of the clear. At the end of the day, the clear is what's protecting the color and the shine and the gloss of the car. So these ones here where you may be removing five microns, fine, go ahead, you know, polish those out. But you also have to think, am I keeping this car forever? Is it a show car? Is it a daily driver? Is it worth chasing these deeper scratches? If it's a garage queen, maybe so. Um, but yeah, you've got to remember if you polish all this out, let's say, you're leaving yourself probably 10% of the lacquer, original lacquer remaining then, which gives you no room in future to polish again. Um, so yeah, you want to, as I said, get rid of, get rid of them by rounding over those edges um, and make them less visible. But these kind of scratches, the micro marring and, and light swirls, you can usually get away with and you can polish your car a few times over the lifetime of your ownership. Anyway, 
But yeah, as I said, we're going to do a demonstration on the panel behind on polishing, compounding and wet sanding. And I'm also going to be touching on glazes as well for you guys who are not doing it by machine or maybe you're just getting into detailing. So yeah, let's go over to the test panel. Okay, so over on the test panel then, we've got a few sections taped off just here then. So yeah, just going to talk quickly about some of the pads that you may end up using. So when we talk about polishing, as I say, you're talking about that final step. Um, sometimes you might hear one step polishing that's where this like orange pad is going to come in handy this is a one step pad so you can normally cut and finish with this pad and then we've got the black pad as well this is a finishing pad up here i've just got a little red pad as well this is another alternative to a finishing pad just two different that one's super super soft compared to that but they are both finishing pads and these are typically what you're going to be using the orange one would be used for swirl, remo swirl removal and the black one is going to be for the final jewel in getting that high gloss from the paintwork. On to compounding then. So this is the more aggressive to get rid of deeper scratches. Um, maybe a little bit of white orange peel. Or typically that's for wet sanding. On to compounding. We're talking then about heavy cut foam pads. So there's much, much firmer. All of these pads, by the way, are from Lake Country Manufacturing. My go-to is the microfiber. Um, really really aggressive so when you do do compounding you're going to leave some hazing behind as well so it's not a one-step process or you may be familiar with here in body shops using wall pads that's what this is I've never really used wall pads they are a lot more aggressive something you probably would use on gel coats and things like that um, but they're essentially going to be your three options for compounding for the most part there are always different you know your own preference and things like that and then once you've done the compounding you then go back to the polishing stage that i just mentioned a moment ago um to refine any marks you've left from the compounding stage and then the most aggressive is wet sanding now yeah i've not got any five inch discs so i probably should um but these are what i use for headlight restoration so we've got wet sanding discs we've got a 2000 3000 and 4000 the higher the number which is the great i think it's grit per inch if i remember rightly the higher the number the finer it is so yeah you, you'd be familiar with hundreds of grits for woodworking um if you've ever sanded down your doors when you're redecorating in the home you know you'll use like 240 480 grit yeah these get into the thousands these are like rough a4 paper that's the only way i can describe them um so you go you start with the most aggressive flatten out the orange peels, the scratch, whatever it is you're trying to do. You can also buy wet sanding sheets if you want to just do a localised area, say stone chip touch-ups or just a small scratch. Um, and as I said, you can buy five inch pads, five inch discs as well to do an entire panel. One thing I will mention when wet sanding, well, if you're watching this and you're thinking of wet sanding, hopefully you've got the ability to do that. You've tried it before. If you're a newbie, I probably wouldn't suggest it, but anyway, if you're gonna try wet sanding for the first time, you wanna leave like an inch gap all around the edge of that panel. It's really hard to refine those wet sanding marks from right up to the edge. So anyway, and then up top here, we've got a section that I've just yeah, sectioned off to test some glazing at the end. So if you're doing this either by hand, um, because you can get good results by hand or you're practicing polishing, you can typically start off with a glaze. If you're doing it by hand, you're gonna be using foam applicators, the traditional German applicator, we've got a fancy split one there for better grip, or microfiber uh, hand applicators to apply by hand. If you do want to try it by machine, just use a finishing pad to apply a glaze. So we'll be going through all of those in just a moment. So yeah, let's go to me polishing and cutting and wet sanding. Oh, but before we do, Let's just move some of these out of the way and we'll take a look at some of the defects. I nearly forgot to mention that, didn't I? So this test panel has been heavily abused over the last few weeks, doing snow foam shootouts and pre-wash shootouts. Um, so yeah, these under different lights show different defects. If I get a spotlight, we can see as well. Um, this section here is the wet sanding section. So that's gonna get really, um, yeah, that, that's got a lot of scratches in there. So has this to show you what uh, compounding can do. And then polishing. We'll show you how little effect polishing will have on that 
but what you can achieve. And then, as I say, up top here, uh, we've got the glaze section. Um, again, just to give you an idea of the before. So now, let's go and test them out. So here then, so if we go over here, this is how the paintwork was before. And then onto the wet sanding section. So you can see all these swirls and stuff here no longer show in wet sanding, but it's all flat and rather dull looking. I've got a few swirls here. I could have worked that polish a bit more. I normally would do sort of two or three steps, but again, if we just drop it down here, see how much of an improvement that is. I'll come up here. Yeah, you can see the improvement from the compounding stage. And then polish, as you see, it doesn't remove a great deal of swirls, it removes some. Um, but this is the refining, but this is glossier. If we hold the light further away, that does look glossier than that stage, which clearly is glossier than this. So now what we would go ahead and do is compound that to remove the flatness of the wet sanding, which will bring that to similar to that. And then we polish, so yeah. Let's go ahead and do all that and then we'll move on to the glazers. Okay, so now we've wet sanded this bit, we've compounded here and we've polished this section. I've then gone ahead and compounded the wet sand part as well, just to show you. Yeah, you basically, you bring it back so we get the GoPro again. So this is just polishing. You are gonna see, get some light swirl. So this is, again, the body beforehand. A light polish, it's made an improvement. This is compound, so you can see the hazing, the, yeah, marks left behind from heavy cutting. Um, and you've also got that as well in the wet sand section because I've then gone ahead and polished the matteness away. Um, so next we're just going to refine that and I'll, yeah, again, let's quickly speed through this. And then we'll show you what it'll look like. So I'll, I'll just polish one section and uh, yeah, refine the paintwork for you. So again, here we go. This is polished. It's now had two stages. Um, so you've got the swirls. Uh, this is a light polish, but once again, just as a reminder, that's what it was like before terrible and that's a couple of passes with a machine on a polish and then here we go this is when you've compounded it so yeah this bonnet has had a hard life there's a few deeper marks but compared to just polishing that's compound and then this is wet sanding and just a reminder if you don't go ahead and polish after you've compounded you get all those lovely trails and marks still left behind so yeah once you've compounded you do have to polish um so yeah it's, this is not a test to get this bonnet looking perfect is it? after all it's the test bonnet and i wouldn't be putting equipment on it if i was wanting it perfect this is just show you the difference between wet sand polish and compound and polish so next just to finish this off i'm going to show you what we can do by hand up top here um I know some of you may be wondering what glazers are and what they do. So here I've got one of our favorite glazers is Diana Gloss uh, Glacier or Glazier, however you pronounce it, it's probably Glazier. I've always pronounced it Glacier. Anyway, so we're gonna show you what you can do with that by hand. Um, and also if you are wanting to dabble with machine polishing, just how easy it is, such a slick, oily glaze, just how easy it is to apply with a machine. And it's a great product to practice with. So we'll quickly, Smash that out up top before we wrap this video up. Also, I just want to mention as well, if you want to try and win some pads, I have got a couple of sets of these to give away as well. And um, these are from Lake Country Manufacturing. So make sure you go ahead and follow me over on Instagram. I'm on there as randomly set. Um, just check out for a post. Um, I'll also probably put on the detail and space Instagram account as well. Yeah, keep an eye out over there for a post on how to win these. So yeah. Let's do a little bit of glazing. So yeah, onto glazers then. Um, as I said, this is probably where you're gonna be starting off. So it's quite easy to apply. You just want a foam applicator or a microfiber applicator. I'm gonna be going with microfiber, just because why not? Now, first of all, I'm just gonna be doing a small section. Uh, 
I don't glaze by hand anymore. I haven't done for a long time. It's a pain. It really is. Um, but anyway, what you want to do then is a couple of blobs onto your microfiber. Um, it's also as well worth noting, this particular glaze will stain um, whatever pad you're using. And then just, yeah, work that in circular motions until you get arm ache. Um, glazing by hand, you ain't gonna be removing any defects. So you just wanna get good coverage. So up and down, left to right, right rather. And you can go in overlapping swirls if you wish. Um, but just cover the panel that you're doing because you're typically you're gonna be doing a panel at a time. You can leave it to cure for a few minutes, particularly this one. So some glazers do have a little bit of sealant in them, a bit of protection. Um, but the idea for them is to brighten up the paintwork and fill in any swirls that are left behind. So in the UK, Auto Glim Super Resin Polish is a good one for that. Um, and then typically what you'll find is in a couple of washes, you'll have essentially washed those filling properties away um, and you will need to reapply again. Uh, which is where I think some people get the misconception polishing doesn't work. Um, they're thinking of hand polishing and yes, to some degree, I'm just going to do another one here because I'm just chatting. To some degree, hand polishing, it doesn't, you know, unless you're, you've got arm biceps like this, you ain't polishing scratches away by hand. And why would you, um, when you can buy a machine polisher and just do it? Um, yeah, I say that, it's a bit, take it for granted, you know how to use a machine polisher. But yes, you, you wouldn't aim to correct an entire car by hand. You would pick up a machine, learn to use it, and do it that way. But for the average Joe, this is what they're going to want to do on a sunny Sunday afternoon. So that's that. Buff that away, and we'll put the light on it in a sec. And then for machine-wise, as I said, you can pick up either of these uh, black or red foam applicators. These are super soft finishing pads. I prefer the black one. I've already got a black one loaded up on the machine down here. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, beauty about using black as well, you don't know it's staining. Um, and just a couple of small pea size amounts. You don't need a lot. It's a very oily, slick product. Um, this one in particular. Some are a bit drier and dustier, um, but yeah, this one is beautiful. So, oh, well, let me change this to DA mode because I know that's what you guys are gonna be using it on. Um, and yeah, just go. Is that you don't need any downwards pressure just let the machine do the work glide it over you get nice little pattern um, that's a damp cloth I didn't want that one um, and yeah and just let the machine do the work as I say it's gonna be nothing compared to those but I'll quickly get the GoPro on which is now covered in polishing dust and the torch are we recording yes we are so just look at the garage lights so that's where we've wet sanded um, compound polished and that's just polish you can see all these little scratches and stuff around here different lights show different defects you can see it's a bit shinier there and a lot more shinier and then this is where we've just applied the glaze um, once again let's have a quick let's move that pad out of the way that's what we're dealing with to begin with that is polishing that is compound, there's a little mark there. That's compound, and that's wet sanded, but we've not, oh, and compounded, but we've not polished that. Um, and then just as a reminder, this is the bodywork beforehand. Um, glazed by hand, slight improvement if we look. Really bad, still bad, but less bad. And if you can do it by machine, it does bring it to be a tad glossier. It's a bit hard to tell on camera. Um, but I've done a few cars recently in the last couple of videos, the Land Rover, Range Rover, Car Edition, I think was Glossier, and Next Door Neighbours uh, car, the white Range Rover convertible was also Glossier. Did we use it on the Golf High car? I can't remember. But anyway, glazers are that easy to use. You're not going to get full corrections, but you are going to get much better looking paint. You're going to get more depth from the colour. You're still going to have some of the swirls, but you will hide a lot as well. Um, so yeah. 
pretty much it. So yeah, they're the differences then between wet sanding, compounding and polishing. I say they're all part of the same polishing process. They just vary in terms of levels of aggression and when you would use each of those. And as I say, we've got the glazers up top as well. One thing I just want to quickly mention is well, we've recently launched the membership program on our YouTube channel. So if you want to go ahead and support us, get early access and behind the scenes and shout outs and videos, that'd be very much appreciated. So yeah, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to wet sand this entire panel, get it ready for some more product testing that I've got planned. And uh, yeah, I'll leave you to it. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to smash that like button. Also, I'll just put an icon up here where you can go ahead and subscribe as well. It really does help us out. And according to YouTube, you'll like these videos below. So I hope you enjoy this one and hopefully we'll see you in the next video. So until then, have fun detailing.